Hey guys, welcome. So my name is Marina. I'm the founder of Creatively. And I'm joined here by my husband, Alex, who's the Hello, everyone. mysterious voice in the background. So if you're just joining, please say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're from. Let us know what you're drinking tonight. Um, what else? Let us know if you're a first time painter. So tonight we are going to be painting. Where, where you're joining us from? That's, I said that already. Oh my God, oh my God of course. <laughs> so tonight we are going to be painting a uh, pumpkin pickup. Really fun, uh, perfect fall painting. I'm excited. I'm right in line with that. Very excited. We, I like pumpkins. We don't have much of fall left, so I'm excited to do this right? painting. You got to get one good last fall, and then, and then we brace for the winter. Then we brace for the winter. Deborah's got the right idea. Let me see. Welcome, Deborah. Welcome, Jana. Welcome, Vicky. I see people from Ontario here, from Iowa, from New York. We are streaming from Queens, New York, as always. So I'm going to give you guys about 10 minutes or so to set up. Um, I'm going to go through my setup over here as well. Um, but in the meantime, just continue setting up, grab your drinks, grab some snacks, turn on some music, do whatever you got to do. So should I mention? Obviously, obviously and always. <laughs> so guys, we did mention that we may have a giveaway tonight if we have Maybe. 100 people attending. I don't know how many we have right now, but we'll see what happens later on <laughs> all right guys so alex you ready for this i'm always ready all right let's, born ready let's do this you don't gotta get ready if you stay ready boom is that a, is that a, a famous lessons. quote i don't know a life lesson. okay all right guys so we have our 12 by 12 canvas 12 by 12 canvas check Hold up, got to position the painting. Got to make sure. Okay, we have our palette paper, shiny side up. Shiny side up. Palette All right, paper. we have a lot of colors tonight. I think it's more than we've ever had before. You ready for this? I'm ready for, I'm some, ready for some colors. All right, so we have phthalo blue, phthalo blue. White, white, yellow. White, yellow. yellow. You ready for this one? No, Rossiana. No. Ross. Ross. <laughs> there she is. We have black. Black. Thalo green. Thalo green. green. Plot, twist. Plot twist. And red. And red. Just red. Just red. Wow. It's it's actually wow. called fire red, but yeah. it's red. Absolutely, it's called fire red. All right. We also have our cup with water. Cup with water, clearly labeled. Clearly labeled as paint water. Pro tip. Pro tip. Very important. Okay, we have two brushes. We have a large brush, size 16, and we have a small brush, size 4, um, size 2, size 00. zero. Uh, There's a lot brush. of options, but this is a small, small brush. brush. Double check. And then we also have a uh, paper towel. Uh, this is a bring your own paper towel situation. B Y O P. Absolutely, P T. <laughs> um, so we also have our tracing paper. So this is actually carbon paper, and then we have our traceable. So the traceable I actually linked in the chat. And it's um, so it's pinned. So if you guys don't have a traceable, you're welcome to download it off our website and print it out. Or you could hand draw if you yeah. feel like it, if you feel bold and fearless. Free wheel it, right? Um, but for this tutorial, there's no drawing necessary, um, no painting or drawing experience necessary at all. Um, so if you want the traceable, you're more than welcome to get it off our website and we have the link pinned. And then the traceable also comes with a sample piece and step-by-step -step instructions so you could easily follow along. Oh, oh wow. wow. 
wow, way to be excited. I couldn't I, tell if I, that was sarcasm, if that was for real. It's, was, it's that, genuine. was that genuine it's, excitement? It's, it's always genuine. Okay. And then last but not least, we also have our adult beverage. Adult beverage so, in hand. I made it really festive tonight to match the painting. So it's, it's kind of the same color. Um, so this is a whiskey apple cider. Whis no, no, no. Apple cider old fashioned. Is that what it's called? None of what you previously said was true. There's bourbon in it, not whiskey. So, okay. So it's a uh, apple cider old fashioned, I think. Um, so, <laughs> so it has bourbon, apple cider, um, some bitters, some apples for garnish, and a some little, cinnamon. A little too much cinnamon. A little too much cinnamon. But it's, it's kind of delicious. It's, it's kind of okay. perfect. It's, it's, it does feel like a nice sweet drink. We're it's right on point. really turning it up on a Tuesday. There you go. There you go. Starting early. <laughs> So we have a few more minutes before we get started. The easel. The easel. You never show the secret I trick. I always forget this. Thank you, Alex. So if you guys purchase the box, we also have an easel that could be made right out of the box. I'm going to switch screens for a second. And I always forget to show this. So you could take your box and fold your lid back. And then put two pieces of tape, so a piece of tape on this side, and then a piece of tape on, oh, where's the camera? On this side, and then it stands right up, and you could put your painting in here. So it's super easy, really sturdy, and you could see your painting from a distance, which is always cool. I don't use it for the purpose of this tutorial, um, but an easel is always super helpful. So really up to you. Thank you, Alex. See, I have purpose. So good. I remember. Things. So good. So if you guys have any questions before we get started, let me know in the chat. Also let us know if it's their first time. So I already game. said that, were you not listening? I like to, I like to emphasize. <laughs> my, my third grade teacher once said repetition was key to memory. Well, someone once said that you have to repeat something seven times before I'm you actually hear it. Threads. So I'm twice, twice is okay. Threads. I'll take it. So we have people joining from Ontario, Oregon, Connecticut, North, Texas, in the house. Constituents, Constituents here. Love it. Awesome. Anyone, anyone first time painting at all? Any first time painters at all and any first time painters with us? No. With creatively. All right. So I am going to mention this at the beginning. So we may have a giveaway tonight, later in the oh, night. Oh, 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 oh. We'll see. Teaser. We'll see what happens. Um, but the way that you enter the giveaway is by commenting in the chat because at the end we might select a random person from the chat using a random comment picker. So the more that you comment, the more chances you have of winning this giveaway. So I'll tell you guys more about this later, perhaps. Hashtag flood the feed. But don't spam. It's relevant only. <laughs> All right, so I think, so it's 8.10. We're very punctual. Let's get started. I'm finally rubbing off. Oh, so I did not mention that we also have a colored pencil. So this is super helpful when you're tracing. It just helps you see what you're tracing, but you could use a pencil, you could use a pen. Um, what else? You could use a crayon. So anything that you have around the house, but something colored definitely helps you see the traceable. So I'm gonna put my carbon paper, the dark side down on the canvas. And then I'm gonna position this traceable about maybe two inches from the top or so, and then all the way to the right side. So this is kind of where my truck is gonna go. Feel free to move it around your canvas and position it elsewhere. This is your painting after all. 
All right, so I'm gonna move my paints to the side because I don't wanna get my hand covered in paint, but I'm just gonna start tracing. So just remember guys, um, you could tape down your traceable so that it doesn't shift. I'm just gonna hold mine down very tightly and hope that it doesn't shift. So definitely if you have painter's tape or anything like that, it's very, very helpful. You'll leap the faith, huh? I'm gonna, I'm gonna attempt this. I respect, I respect it. Because you know? what's the worst that could happen? Fortune favors the bold. And if you guys are hand drawing your truck, I know a few people are, um, Jana included. I'm super excited to see what kind of um, truck that you come up with. Oh, we have uh, Candy's doing this as well. She hand drew the truck. Amazing. Oh, oh I, I'm too, uh, I'm too intimidated to try such things. It would never look like a truck if I freehand this bad boy. <laughs> Alex, we got to work on your fearlessness. Listen. <gasps> we'll do it when we start painting. I know. We thought of the same thing. <laughs> Mary, we pinned a link to the traceable. So sometime... It it helps to lift your carbon paper up and kind of see whether it's actually coming out on your canvas. Not just blind faith, like you just have to hold it down and go through it all and then at the end- You're see. like, oops, it actually did not come out or I had my uh, carbon paper the wrong way. Is that even a thing? Yeah, because if you put it the other side, it's not gonna do anything. And as we're tracing, guys, feel free to change up any of these details. For example, if you want to have two doors on your car instead of one, if you want to have more windows or no, no windows or tinted windows. So feel free to change it up. Or maybe it's one, you know, like a convertible truck. No roof at all. Or one of those super rustic type things. Or that. You know, a farmer's truck or... I don't know what it would be. Maybe it just been through a lot, so. Well, the this roof, one's a little rusty. The roof, the roof didn't make it. The roof. All right, so I'm tracing these pumpkins. So these pumpkins are actually huge compared to the truck. And I've actually seen these types of pumpkins in real life where they're like, they're bigger than you. Let's not get crazy. <laughs> but know, it, it exists. Do they? Yeah. Don't fib. So I'm not pressing down too hard on the canvas because I want to make sure that I don't pierce it by accident. Ooh, good point. Are they called anything different? Like, is it a certain type of pumpkin? That's a good question. I don't know. I haven't read up on pumpkin sorts before this, wow. this live. Wow. 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 wonder if we have any pumpkin connoisseurs pumpkin, yes all right so you can kind of see my traceable so i'm just going to put it to the side you guys can kind of see it so guys before we start painting you ready alex so we probably we probably should have done this before we started drawing but definitely before we start painting, I want to ask you guys to please raise your large brush in the air in your right hand and please repeat after me. I promise. I promise. To relax and have fun. To relax and have fun. To not judge my painting. To not judge my painting. Or the painting of others. Or the painting of others. And to be fearless. And fearless thank you alex boom all right we're, we are ready i can move my palette paper here let me move this up a bit all 
All right, so we are gonna mix uh, a lot of white and a little bit of the phthalo blue to make a really light blue color. So I'm just gonna dip my brush into the water and dry it a bit. And then I'm gonna take some white. So I'm gonna move this up so you guys can see what I'm mixing. I'm gonna take some white. I'm gonna take just a little bit of blue and then make a really pretty sky blue color. Maybe add a little bit more white to make it a little lighter even. And then I'm just gonna start from the top of my canvas and go into horizontal strokes all the way across. And I'm actually probably gonna make it even lighter than this. So get a really nice light blue color. What do you call light phthalo blue? Sky blue? Was that awful? I certainly hope that's not the correct answer. <laughs> so we are gonna go maybe three to four inches down the canvas. So this is a 12 by 12. If you guys are using a different size canvas, definitely feel free to adjust. So it's gonna go maybe around here or so, all the way across. And I'm not gonna make it a perfect horizontal line. I'm kind of gonna make it a little bit crooked so that it's not perfectly straight because you don't want your sky to look too stripey. Yeah, Is stripey a word? It can okay, be. Okay, good. Potentially. You know, if lenient right. enough. I'll take it. So I'm mixing a little bit of water and it's gonna help me kind of spread the paint around the canvas. I'm getting paint on my pumpkins. It's a full on experience. <laughs> you said you are using water to, to spread the paint? Yeah, I'm it? just dipping my brush just a little bit into water, just because it helps uh, to spread the paint a bit. But we're not like, uh, like soaking no. or anything, like not too wet. Uh, Fine balance. Fine balance. So there's my blue color. So as you see, it's not a perfect stripe all the way across. It's kind of messy and it gets a little bit lower in certain parts. So it doesn't really matter. Make it as messy as you want. It'll look better at the end. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my brush. And I'm gonna add a stripe of white and I'm gonna go right into the blue to kind of make it blend and um, mix it in a bit, create a nice gradient. And then I'm probably gonna do maybe like an inch and a half or maybe two inches down with the white and paint right into the blue. So I'm going right into my previous color. So the reason I'm using white, guys, is actually, there's a reason for it. Oh, oh, you ready? Method to the madness. So our sky is a blue and yellow color. So if you go directly with yellow and mix it into the blue, it's gonna turn green. So that's why we yes, put white in between. So that way it just goes yellow and then fades nicely into the blue. Oh, so there's, there's a purpose for everything. So I'm going right into this color and blending it out. Just going back and forth with my brush. And I'm also kind of going right over these pumpkins and this truck cause whatever, I can still see it. <laughs> You know, I'm not covering it up completely. I could still see the outline, but I'm kind of with this high quality, high quality creatively paint. 
You can just paint over it after. You can. All right, so we have our white color. And I'm taking it down kind of right where the truck is. Looks perfectly blended. So now I'm gonna wash my brush. Actually, I don't even think I need to wash my brush. You could just leave it. So I'm gonna go in with yellow and I'm gonna start at the bottom here where I kind of finished my white. So probably where your truck begins. And I'm just gonna go right into the white. And I'm gonna be careful not to really get it into where the blue area is just because it might look green, which is okay. I mean, if you want your sky to look green, I'm more than okay with it. I can't wait to see it after, um, but also be a little bit cautious about it or maybe not maybe, you know, maybe just, just maybe not. toss caution to the wind and maybe just do it go nike on it so i'm gonna add a little bit of white to my yellow just to make it a little bit lighter so it's more subtle And if you guys want to use orange or pink or maybe purple for your sky, you're more than welcome to. You don't have to use yellow and blue. You could totally use other colors. So I'm mixing the white with yellow just to make it a little bit lighter because this yellow is kind of very intense looking. So I'm doing like a lighter yellow and I'm just going in here and I'm going right over my pumpkins but I could still see the outline so I'm not covering it up completely. And then also, again, guys, it's not a perfect stripe across. So some parts are going up a little bit into the blue. Some are kind of lower down. So it doesn't look so perfect. And you could use white to blend it in a bit in between. So just make sure that your paint is kind of still wet. And then you could take some white and you could kind of blend it out a bit. Awesome. So my yellow kind of ended uh, just where this truck starts. Or the kind top of, of the truck or which part of the So truck? I didn't I didn't study my truck parts before this tutorial, so I don't know what it's called, but basically it's the front of the truck. The hood? Yeah, thank you the hood of the truck. Thank you, Alex. Or I did not study either, but that, 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 that was a free Or where your pumpkins that. end, either one. Okay, so I'm gonna wash my brush again. And I'm gonna go in with a light raw sienna. Alex's favorite color. It is. Your creative paint is acrylic paint? Yes, so we are painting with acrylics tonight. Love it. And every time, for that matter. Love it. Because <laughs> you get to go, go over stuff, make it 
So we did not branch out to watercolor or oils yet, but who knows what will happen in Maybe. creatively. All right, so we are going to take some raw sienna and we're going to mix it with white. So it's also going to be a lighter color. And we're going to create a curvy line kind of right where our truck starts. So the top of the truck, not the hood, but where the passenger sits. Oh, yeah. The roof? The, the roof. The roof of the car, my dearest. So kind of like that. So I guess you have to decide where you want your mountains to be so they could be higher than the truck they could be a little bit lower it really depends on what you're looking for so this is my wavy line for the mountains so these are not really even mountains they're kind of um hills and then i'm going to create another line for my horizon so it's going to be somewhere here and then i'm just going to paint this part in between i'm going to paint it uh, with the light raw sienna color. So this is the part where I kind of want to avoid the truck a bit as much as I can um, But I'm not going to be too careful with it because we'll paint over the truck anyway So if you get some paint into the truck, that's okay it's just we'll, we'll live But you do want to get it where the window is because your window is see-through Unless you have tinted windows, up to you. But my windows are see-through, so I'm just going to paint right into these windows. It's a bit hard to see, but I'm avoiding the truck, but painting these mountains into these windows. And then I'm going to try to avoid the pumpkins as well. And I'm just going to paint all the way down here, down to my horizon line. So you want these hills to be kind of a light color, um, almost, almost like you're yellow because they're kind of far in the distance. So you want them to almost blend in with the background. So if you made them too dark, you could always go back in with a lighter color and just paint over it um, because this is acrylic paint. So as soon as it dries a little bit, you could paint right over it and cover your mistakes. So. Definitely um, don't be scared to make any mistakes because there's no such thing. Right, Alex? Absolutely. You could paint right over your, so I could paint over this entire it's canvas. Art. And that too. You know? You know? So Jennifer Hobbs asked, how do you keep it from bleeding over when you go over the other colors? So good question. Um, so it really depends on what paints you're using. So the creatively paints, are pretty high quality. Um, they're not as watery, so I usually don't run into that issue. Um, so if your paints are more watery, try not to use a lot of water. And that way it's not gonna bleed. You could also wait for the paint to dry a little bit and then put the other color over it. And it also depends on what surface you're painting on. So it depends on, the canvas that you have, um, some canvases, the colors bleed much easier. So really depends on your supplies. Um, definitely if you've gotten the Creatively box, you probably wouldn't run into those issues. All right, Alex. Who's excited? <laughs> Who's ready? Who's ready? This, this guy. <laughs> so while everyone is catching up, I do want to tell you guys, if you're not familiar with Creatively, we're essentially a paint party in a box. So our goal is to bring people together through creativity. And if you're looking for other creative and fun nights in with your friends, with your family, um, also on your own, Definitely check out our website. We have a bunch of really beautiful uh, painting options on our website. 
Uh, we also have monthly subscriptions and gifts. So this will make a perfect gift for the creative person in your life, the not so creative person in your life. Just needs that outlet. Exactly. Yeah. So we actually have our website link at the bottom of the screen. It's creativelybox.com. Oh, my water is a very interesting color right now. I like it. All right. So I'm not even going to wash my stuff. brush, but I'm going to take the raw sienna and I'm going to cover the remainder of my canvas with this raw sienna. You ready? So the it. trick is, and this is kind of, this is what I prefer to do, but um, it might work for you in a different way, but I'm gonna do this in short vertical strokes. Just because I have um, hay, um, is it hay? Wheat fields, hay, Wheat. whatever you wanna call it, I have it at the bottom and it's kind of facing vertically. So that's why I'm gonna paint the remainder of my canvas in vertical strokes. Um, but it's really optional to you. If you want, you could cover it horizontally and then we're still going to go with the vertical and diagonal strokes for the hay at a later step. So I'm also going to try to avoid the truck for this, but if you get it into the lines, it's totally okay. How would one get close to a color of raw sienna type? So it's really tough. Um, that's why I included it in my kit because uh, mixing it is a bit tricky. Um, so raw sienna is kind of a mix between yellow and brown. Um, like a mustard. Like yeah. a mustard color. So it really depends on what kind of yellow paint you have, what kind of brown paint you have. If you don't have brown, then you could definitely mix it, but um, you have to play around with the proportions. So that's why actually I included it in my kits just because it's much easier. Um, and this is kind of my favorite fall color, to be honest. Pro probably more yellow than brown. Very, very mathematical. <laughs> I'd give it a 75 to 83% yellow. We also asked our followers a while back to name this color. So instead of raw sienna, to come up with a fun name for it. Um, and I remember there were some really fun options. One of them being mustard, which is perfect. A little too on the nose. Wouldn't you say? Possibly. I'm trying to remember what else there was. You know, that could always be a danger for you. <laughs> My memory is uh, fantastic. fantastic. Exactly. Thank you, Alex. So I want to make sure that I'm covering my canvas so I can see any white. See the um, bottom of the of the truck. You outlined a little more for the truck. Didn't ignore the the uh, crazy. Yes, yeah, so I'm trying to stay outside of the truck. But if you get your lines into the truck, it's totally okay, because um, we'll be able to cover it up with another color after.
So I also want to blend this raw sienna with the lighter color a bit. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to go right into my other color. So kind of just to blend this out a bit. So if your color is already dry, so mine is a little bit dry, I'm just gonna add the lighter color that I mixed previously into here and just kind of combine these two together so it just blends. And I'm gonna do the same thing here, so I'm just gonna add my original light raw sienna or mustard or whatever you wanna call it, and I'm just gonna blend these two together. Super easy. We have a question, what brand type of paint we use? Great question. So these are acrylic paints and they're actually a creatively brand. Um, so if you purchase our box from our website, you'll get the exact same paints that I'm using right now. Actually, everything that I'm using right now is included in your box. Um, so we have the 12 by 12 canvas, we have palette paper, we have whatever color paints you need for the specific painting. We also have um, these beautiful sample cards with the original painting and then step-by-step -step instructions so you could follow along. Very nice. um, and sometimes if you're a subscriber, we do include some surprises in your boxes depending on the month and the painting. So I think a couple of months ago, we did a painting using a fan brush. So we included a, a high quality fan brush for free because we're, oh, oh, we're a little crazy like that. Oh, oh, um, and yeah. All right, Alex, you ready? What I tell you about my motto? You don't got to get ready if you stay ready. Boom. Let's do it. Ready? All right, let's do it. Okay, so I'm gonna take my small brush. So this is an optional step and it's kind of very subtle in the painting, but I definitely encourage you to play around with it. Um, and what's the worst thing that could happen? You could just paint over it. So we are actually going to add these sun rays over here using white paint. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my uh, small brush and I'm just gonna size two, four? size two or four, or zero zero. Is it like uh, roulette double zeros? This one is actually a uh, double zero, and I actually included this in a previous box for our subscribers and return customers. Oh, 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 so if you have this brush, um, definitely you're welcome to use it, or you can use a slightly bigger size. All right, so we are gonna take some white and we're just gonna start from the bottom of our, so actually right where the horizon line is. And I'm just gonna paint some white here. It could be pretty messy. So this is kind of where your sun is. So kind of a, a half circle or maybe even less than half. And then I'm just gonna add some rays. So I'm just extending some of these lines out and I'm barely touching the canvas and that way my lines are very thin. And I'm thinning them out as I go higher on my canvas. So we're just adding the sun rays here. Just make sure that all of your rays are slightly different sizes. So I'm just extending them out. Some are shorter, some are a little bit longer.
and it's looking pretty messy, but that's exactly what I want. It's one of those that's going to come together. going to come together. It always comes together at the end. It always just seems to, right at the end, it's like, oh, there it is. There's That's the, the best lovely. part, I think. It, it is, because then it makes you feel like all these weird things that you've done leading up to it was like, oh, there she is. So the rays that are on the left and right side, they're a little bit shorter and the rays that are kind of in the middle of the sun are a little bit longer. So play around, if you don't like it, you could always cover it back up once it's dry. So just wait for it to dry and then you could paint right over with the yellow and then also the light blue. But I encourage you guys to try and be fearless and see what happens. All right, Alex, you ready? I'm so ready. Okay. So we are gonna start painting the truck. So I think I'm gonna start with my large brush and then I'm probably gonna switch over to my smaller brush just to get some of the details. So this is actually my favorite color. I know I said my favorite fall color. My favorite fall color oh, is Ross Sienna. Come on now. But my favorite all-time color is this light beautiful turquoise color so i'm going to take the thalo green i'm going to show you guys so i'm going to take some of the thalo green and i'm going to take some white and mix them together and it creates this really gorgeous color so i encourage you guys to be really creative with this and you could definitely pick a different color for your truck. So you could have a red truck, you could have a blue truck, black, whatever color you wanna use. So it could be your favorite color, it could be whatever you're feeling for today. Um, so we are using this turquoise, but definitely I encourage you to not use turquoise if you don't like that color. So we're just gonna start painting it. So I'm gonna go with kind of vertical strokes as well and just start blocking in my truck. And I'm just avoiding the edges right now. I'm gonna get them with my smaller brush. So I'm just blocking in the larger areas first. Isn't it the most beautiful color you've ever seen? It's like my favorite thing ever. <laughs> Wise. So I'm also kind of going in different directions here. So for the front of the truck, I'm kind of going in horizontal strokes and then where the door is, I'm kind of switching to vertical. So I have it sort of blocked in right now, so I'm gonna switch to my smaller brush. Okay, so I'm gonna mix the color again. So this turquoise color is also pretty tricky to mix from other colors, that's why I include it also in my box, the thalo green, which is a really beautiful color. Thalo green, thalo blue, makes thalo turquoise. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Um, so you could try to mix the turquoise by doing blue, yellow, and white and see what you get. I think that can make a pretty nice turquoise color as well. Wait, blue, yellow. So blue, yellow is green. Um, so if you add more blue than yellow, it's going to look like a bluish green. And then you add white to it, it's going to be lighter. Does that make sense? That makes sense. What, do, what, do, what does blue and green make? Blue and yellow. No, I understand what you said. Blue and green make like a dark bluish make green. A dark color? A bluish green. For some reason, I firmly believe that the turquoise involved both of them. That the blue-green involved both blue and green. Well, you make the green from yellow and blue. Ah, interesting. So I'm just using my small brush and getting into some of these edges here. So here I'm already covering up the outlines from my traceable for the truck. So it's getting harder for me to see where I have some of these details, but this is where this picture comes in because that helps you see where all of your shadows and highlights would be. Is that the little... Card. The sample piece. Oh, the, the sample piece from inside the box. Mm -hmm. Very nice. So I'm now doing the top of this truck. And it's okay to have some of these variations in the color. Like you could see that some of my color is a little bit lighter, some of it is a little bit darker. Um, it actually makes this truck look more rustic. So, and like it's in nature. Well, the truck is not really nature. No, but like you're, you know, it's going through natural sunlight, which will illuminate it uh, differently. That is true. Also, we can go with your rustic thing. <laughs> So I'm just filling in my truck and I'm making sure that I'm covering up all of the canvas so I'm not seeing white through it. And I'm also going to do this inner part of the truck, which is basically the window that's on the other side. So I'm just going to paint this bar in here. So Alex, I'm super excited to reveal the December box later. So this is our oh. November box, which we have our tutorials on the first Tuesday of every month. So this happens to be the first Tuesday of November. So we have a really awesome painting for the first Tuesday of December, which I'm going to show you guys. I posted it on our uh, Creatively Facebook and Instagram page um, yesterday. So if you haven't seen it, I'll show it to you in the original. 
painting in real wait. life. I can't, I can't wait. Um, it's it's one of my favorites. I know I say this kind of a lot, but this one's really one of my favorites. Oh, yeah. You play uh, loose and fast with that word, huh? <laughs> I have a few favorites, and that one is definitely one of them. Okay, so we sort of covered our truck. So now we're gonna paint in the wheels. So I'm just gonna wash my small brush and I'm gonna continue using the small brush. And I'm just gonna use black and I'm gonna paint in these wheels, but I'm gonna leave the middle part out for now. So only the outer circle, I'm gonna cover in black. And Alex, I might need your help with specific car parts. So feel free, Listen. feel free to brush up on it right now. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Let, let me just look up the uh, the old exactly. skeleton chart of the body. See, we got the rims. We got the something. I already gave you hood. Well, that was an easy one. That was just a test. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like once Halloween is over, I'm already in holiday mode. <laughs> like right away, October 31st, November 1st, already in holiday mode. So you're just skipping right to the end. Exactly. Okay. okay. So, I mean, that's a move, I suppose. <laughs> I feel like a few years ago, it used to be after Thanksgiving, you're in holiday mode, but now it's like after Halloween, it already starts. I like a good Thanksgiving. I'm not skipping ahead. Wow, these wheels are a little crooked. <laughs> Bless you. Okay, so these wheels are pretty crooked right now, which is okay. We're gonna fix them in a bit. So I am gonna mix a gray color. So I'm gonna use a little bit of black and a little bit more of the white. I don't know if you could see. Bless you. So I'm gonna do it a medium-ish gray color. <laughs> and I'm just gonna cover in the inside of these wheels. So I guess it's the rims, I'm gonna call them the rims. Candy, did you get your Christmas shopping done already? I would be super impressed if you did. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Not, it's not allergy season. Sometimes, when you sneeze, you get you sneeze in bunches. Wow. 
So I'm covering up this entire rim in gray. And this is the part where I could kind of perfect my circles in a way. So I could take some gray and try to make it a more perfect circle shape. I could also take some black and try to fill in some of the actual wheel. To fix this up a bit. So it's looking a little bit better. And then I'm going to create a darker gray. So I'm just going to put more black into my gray color. And I'm going to add an inner circle here. Kind of like that, and then another one on this side. I could actually make it a bit darker, so I'm going to make it almost black, and then go around it one more time. And then if you guys want, you could add a highlight to your rims. So I'm going to just add more white to my color. I'm just going to mix it here. I'm just taking more of the white. And you could add just a stroke or so right next to where your wheel is. This might be too much, so I'm going to make it more gray and just go over it. And then I'm going to do something similar on the other side. If you want, you could also add it in the inner circle as well. Just a little, just a little stroke. And these are going to be your rims. There's some solid rims. I agree. Some solid, some solid rims, if I do say so myself. Okay, for the next part, guys, you might need some more of that adult beverage just to calm, calm the nerves a bit. Nerves. We're going to get into some Little shading. If you need go. to refill, you could refill. We'll just we'll wait a couple of minutes for you guys. So it's actually not as hard as you make, may think, guys, to do the shadows and the highlights on the truck. So we're going to start by using our small brush and we're just going to make a darker uh, turquoise color. So I'm just going to add some more of this dark green into my original color. And I'm going to start to trace out the truck as my initial shadow. So this is pretty easy. So I'm just going to start from the left side of my truck. And kind of start tracing it. If your color is too dark, you could always add just a little bit of white to it. And this is where I might need to refer to my sample piece just to see where these lines are. So I have a line over here. I'm going down. So this, I think, is the bumper. Alex, what say you? <laughs> like in the very front? Yeah. That we can safely call the okay. bumper. Okay, and then I'm going to do a little curve over the wheel. So 
So super easy, I just have a horizontalish line going across and then a little bit down. And then I'm gonna add my door here. So I'm just gonna go um, starting from the left side of the window down. And then on the other side, from the right side of my window also down. And if for whatever reason you mess up the line, like let's say it's diagonal or it's in the wrong place, you could always just go over it with the turquoise. So I'm gonna show you guys just how easy it is. I'm gonna mix the original color. And you could just cover up your line. So you see, it was, and I actually added a highlight by accident but you could cover it up with the original color. Happy accident. Happy accident. Super easy. Um, so if I wanna make this line a little bit thinner, I could also just cover it up with the original color. Or I could cover it up altogether and redraw my line if, it, if by accident I put it in the wrong place. So I'm just gonna continue kind of tracing my truck with this darker green color. So I'm gonna do the inside of my windows. And then the bottom part of my window. And then I could also add a doorknob here. Oh, well, knob handle? A little knob. Handle? Knobs would more be on a uh, actual door, not a car door. So you could make it horizontal, you could make it vertical, you can make it round. Have you seen round, round knobs on a car? I don't think I have. Rounded or like, like round, like a doorknob. Like a doorknob. That would be kind of cool, be, I would say. That'd be probably something that. Hasn't been quite created yet. There's a that first time have for its everything. Own unique type of uh, appeal. Opening a car door, like you're opening a house door. So I'm adding a darker line to the bottom of my trunk and then another one right next to it. So it's kind of a, a double line. The old double line. And then I'm gonna trace the top of my trunk as well. So this is where the truck really starts coming together. It looks like a pretty great truck. If I do say so myself. And then I'm gonna go to the bottom of this truck. And then I'm also gonna do this rounded part of the truck. Is it the back bumper? Um, yes, well, the very bottom would be the, 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 uh, the back bumper or the bumper still, I suppose. I'm not a car person. Clearly. You can't, you can't expect me to just know these things. Where was your study? I was too busy studying pumpkin parts. Really? Yeah. Are you, are you sure? Yeah, I'm going to get to it later. 
So I added just a thin horizontal line in between um, this part of the rug. Do you know all the parts of a pumpkin? I think I do. The oh, fender. No, gonna... It's the fender. It's the fender. Thank you. Thank you, Glenna. I was reaching for it in the back of my mind. I was like, I know it's not the bumper. You were coming up empty. Empty. <laughs> so I'm also going to darken the part um, right above the wheel. So it's going to be also a darker green. All right, we got this. We got ourselves a truck. Boom. We got ourselves a truck. So now we're going to add a few highlights. So I'm just going to add some white to my turquoise color. So I want to make this color just a little bit lighter than my original truck color. So it's not going to be overly light. It's just going to be a tiny bit lighter. So I'm going to, I don't know whether this is light enough. I'm just going to test it out on my canvas. So I'm going to start um, with the left side of the truck and I'm going to go right underneath the shadow line. So this is actually not light enough. So I'm going to add a little bit more white to it. And I'm just going to add another layer right underneath where I had my shadow. But maybe this is not even light enough. Maybe I need to add even more white. We're just experimenting over here. Okay, so this is pretty good. And then I'm going to add another lighter stroke underneath this shadow. There we go. So just remember guys, if you made your highlight or shadow too wide or too thick, or maybe um, you made it too dark, you could always go back in with the original truck color and cover it up. Ooh. So that way you could keep on playing around and seeing kind of how it's turning out. You could just keep going back and forth. And then I'm going to add another highlight right underneath this shadow as well. So you have the shadow line and then underneath you have the highlight line and then you have the truck color. So it kind of goes in, in, in that pattern. Boom, boom, boom. So I'm also going to add a highlight to the top of this truck. And I think I need to make my highlight a little bit lighter. So don't be afraid to do that as well. The lighter your color is, the more um, shiny your, your truck is going to be. So if you want it to look very rustic, it's probably not going to be as shiny. So I made my highlight a little bit lighter this time. And I'm just going over my original highlight. And then I'm going to get into some highlights on the door. So first of all, my doorknob. I'm just going to add a highlight to the top of it. And then I'm probably going to add a highlight to the right side of my door. So I think this is a little bit too much. So I'm just going to go back in with my original color. And just cover that up a bit.
So I just deleted this highlight that I had. It was super easy to do. Exactly. And then you could make your truck a little bit more rustic in certain parts just by adding slightly different shades of this turquoise. So for example, I'm gonna add a slightly different shade to this door over here. Just in a few vertical strokes. And then right away, it looks uh, more rustic. Rusty, rustic? Rustic. Rustic. I'm not sure we want it to I look I think I want rusty. it to look rustic. I we mean, rusty, rusty. We don't want it to look rusty. <laughs> I mean, it's an old vintage truck. Shouldn't it not, look ru rusty? No. No? It can look vintage. Okay. Fine. Fine. So you can just add a slightly different variant of the turquoise color um, to maybe your door to the back side of the truck just a little bit um, just to give it some interesting variation so maybe i'll add a slightly darker color in here and it's just um half a shade or so different it's not much different so you could play around by adding it to your canvas and then seeing is it too dark is it too light and then adjusting it So for example, I could adjust this door right here. Just by going over it a bit. So I'm gonna continue adding some more highlights to the back of the truck. So I'm just making a lighter turquoise and I'm just going right underneath my fender. Aha. Uh -huh. I remember this time. Who's car savvy? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> so just a highlight here. And then I'm gonna do a highlight to the back of the truck, just going all the way across. So I made my highlight a little bit too thick. So I'm just gonna even it out by using the original turquoise color and just going over some of it. So I just pre-mixed the original car color and I'm just covering up some of this highlight. And I could use just a little bit of water just to help me uh, blend the color onto the canvas a bit. So anything that you do with acrylic, it's very easy to just cover up. So I basically took away most of my highlight for the back. And that way I could just re-add it and make it a little bit thinner. Just by applying a uh, lighter pressure with my brush. How's everyone doing, guys? I feel like I haven't, I haven't asked that in a while. Doing good. doing good. Oh, yeah? Maybe. Hopefully. Right? I hope so. So we have this truck pretty much complete. And feel free to play around with it, add more highlights, add more shadows. You could take away highlights, take away shadows. And just keep going back and forth and see how you like it. So for example, the back fender, um, I could make my highlight a little bit lighter here just to make it more uh, pronounced and more shiny. So I'm just gonna add another lighter color here. There we go. Deborah's got the right idea. Deborah's definitely have the right idea.
So the next step is actually gonna make this truck really come to life. And it's gonna be a really easy thing that you add um, and it's gonna make it look uh, much more three-dimensional just right away. Do you know what that is? I'm like trying to think, I have like zero idea. <laughs> No, for real, I was like, what's missing from the track that can make a pop even more? I have zero idea. Okay, I'm going to tell you. I'm rum, I'm rum so ready. It's the shadow on the bottom. I don't even want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> so this is um, a, a little bit tricky, what we're about to mix, because it's a little bit unexpected. So I'm going to mix blue with raw sienna to make a darker uh, brownish color. So you ready for this? So this is um, an interesting way to make the shadow. So I'm taking some of the blue, I'm taking some raw sienna and it's gonna look almost brown. So we'll see what happens. Maybe it needs to be a little bit darker, but we'll see. So I'm just gonna go right underneath my car and just add a shadow here, just going horizontally across between the two wheels. So I'm leaving some space in between the truck and the shadow. And then I'm also extending this shadow a little bit to the right side and then a little bit to the left side as well. So this is my shadow. It looks a bit intense right now, but it's okay because we're gonna work on um, getting the wheat fields in the foreground. So I actually covered up some of my wheels. So I'm gonna go back in with the small brush and just add them back in. Super easy. So I just take my small brush. And now it looks like I have flat tires. Maybe you're stuck in the mud. With a bunch of pumpkins. So I'm going to take some black and I'm just going to redefine the wheel again. So it does not look like a flat tire. Listen, flat tires happen. There's nothing to be ashamed of. And then I'm going to redefine this wheel. And I think I covered up some of the um, rims by accident. So I'm just going to go back in and just add a lighter gray into my wheel. Oops, too dark. So I'm just redefining my rim because I covered it up by accident. Maybe it's like just a little bit dented and misformed. Maybe because it is a rustic truck. Exactly. Exactly. Just say it. Just All right, so who's ready for some pumpkins? This guy's ready. You don't look too ready, to be honest. What has two thumbs and is ready for some pumpkins? This guy. Wow. This guy. Wow. We oh, won't yeah. even talk about it. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. All right, guys. So we are going to mix an orange color. So I'm going to take some yellow and some red. And make a nice orange color. So, has anyone used a different color for your truck? Just curious. Other Ooh. than turquoise. That would be interesting. I wonder if someone has a different color truck. Maybe a red truck? Or like a... It would be very holiday. 
if it were red, right? Maybe like a, a blue truck? Maybe. I don't know. What, what color it could it be? Would any color. It could be purple. It could be white. Then it wouldn't look very rustic. It could be brown. It could be brown. Oh, someone used purple. Yes. The good color for the truck. The good color for the truck. I like it. So I'm going to start blocking in my pumpkins and I'm just coloring them in completely with orange. So just getting the basic shape down. So it's a little bit hard to see the drawing underneath, but I'm going to use my sample piece just to guide me a little bit. But I'm just blocking in just the basic shape and I'm not doing any details right now. So I think other than pumpkins, um, it could be some other things in the truck, right? Some other fall things. Like what? Um, Wait, like corn? squash. <laughs> <laughs> like flowers. Flowers could be cool. Oh, my Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, isn't she adorable? Wow. Squash? Yeah. Is it squash time? Hmm? I feel like it's more of a, a springy situation. Squash? It's very fall. Is it? Yeah. Is it? Would not have called that. Corn. Corn also is great, but it would be really hard to see because it's not big enough. But maybe if there's... There'd be some serious husks. Serious husks of corn. Some serious husks. Zana knows. So, I'm going to add a little bit of blue to my orange color, and that's going to make brown. You ready for this? It's going to blow your mind a little bit. I'm not ready. Oh, my lord. So this is getting to be a little bit of a brown color. And I'm going to start by adding the stems of the pumpkins. Is that what it is? A stem? So Pumpkins are actually really fun because you can make the stems uh, curly. Have you ever seen those? Yeah, curly a curly stem. stem. Um, so it actually goes, some of them actually are like actual curls. So they're super fun to make. So feel free to get really crazy with your stems. If you want to make more of your brown color, just keep mixing the blue with the orange color that you have, and that'll make brown. And then I have a stem on this pumpkin. So also you could get really crazy with these shapes. And then I have one somewhere over here. Can't really see it, but it's there.
So then I'm gonna go into each pumpkin and just outline the ribs. And actually I learned this word, I did not know that these sections over here are called ribs. Did you guys know that? I was studying my pumpkin parts earlier today. Did you know that, Alex? I did not. Ribs? ribs. I did not know. So I'm just gonna outline my pumpkin that's all the way in the front. And then I'm gonna add the curvy lines starting from where the stem is and just going around the pumpkin. So I'm also, I'm using brown, but you could also use a little bit of red and you could add maybe a darker orange um, to your pumpkin. So feel free to play around with the colors. And then I'm gonna add some ribs, also starting with the stem and just going down on the back pumpkin. So I'm gonna mix a little bit more of the orange. I'm sorry, not the orange, but the brown. So I made the color a little bit darker, so I'm just outlining my stem a little bit. So this part is a, a bit tricky, so adding these shadows in the pumpkin. So if this is your first time adding shadows, definitely don't be too hard on yourself. It takes a little bit of practice, so um, the more mistakes you make, the more you end up learning. So don't be scared to make mistakes because you could paint right over. So I'm gonna continue adding these uh, ribs. So I made my color too dark, so I'm just gonna pre-mix the orange color again and lighten it up a bit you guys can see what I'm mixing. So I made this color a little bit too dark, so I'm continuing with the orange color, just mixing it up again, and then adding some blue to it. And then just play around with the color, see how you like it, try it out on your canvas, and then just adjust it. So again, so these ribs are coming right from the stems. And then the same thing with this pumpkin. So my ribs are a little bit too dark, so I'm just gonna go over it with orange and lighten it up a bit. So I'm just gonna wash my brush completely. Mix some orange, so I'm taking the yellow and I'm taking the red, mixing it together. And then I'm just gonna go over some of these lines and lighten them up a bit. So the thicker I make my color, the easier it is to cover right over this uh, darker brown color. So I'm just painting a little bit over these uh, darker brown lines. So it's looking more blended, so this is good. So I'm gonna 
add a darker line over here where my pumpkin is in the front, just to separate it from the back pumpkin, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna go back in with the brown color and just define this line a bit. So that way you could see where my pumpkin is in the front. And then I'm gonna add some highlights to the pumpkin. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to my orange color. And I'm gonna add it between my ribs. I love saying the word ribs. Such a good word. So I'm adding yellow, red, and then a little bit of white So I'm just adding it in between some of these ribs. So the pumpkin really comes to life with these highlights. So you could go back in and you could lighten up some of the brown color. Um, so for example, this line is a bit too dark. So I'm gonna lighten it up by just going in here with orange. So I'm just gonna mix some orange and I'm just gonna cover up this line. So now it doesn't look as intense. And you could make your highlights even lighter than mine just to make your pumpkins more shiny. Because why not? So by adding a little bit more white to your pumpkin color. This is really making me want to bake some pie. Yeah. So these are my pumpkins. So I hope that your pumpkin stems are a lot crazier than mine. And you're making them more curly and fun looking. You could also go into your pumpkins with a little bit of red, just to give them some variation. So this is totally optional. I'm just gonna add a little bit of red to my orange. And then just add a few strokes of red also coming right from the stems. Just to give it a little bit more variation. And it's super subtle, you can't really see it um, from the screen, but I'm gonna hold it up and I'm gonna show it to you. So you could see there's some red in here. And it gives it some variation. And I think I'm gonna add just a little bit more of the highlights here just to really bring them out. So I'm gonna go back in with a light orange. Okay, so this is looking pretty good to me. So continue playing around um, and see how it comes out. So definitely feel free to make the stems a little bit darker if you need to. Um, you could also, as an optional step, add some shadow to your stems by going in there with a darker color. So it's a little bit hard to see, but I went in there a little bit with a darker color just to give it some variation. And then if you guys want, you could add a person in here if you're really bold 
and daring. So right now there's no one sitting in the truck, but you could totally add someone because um, it, it looks a bit, a bit lonely in there, no? All right, guys, so I want to take a moment to show you our December box. Alex, you ready for this? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Wow, can I get a little bit more enthusiasm here? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, guys, so our new uh, December box painting is called Snowed In. So this is one of my favorite paintings that I've painted. Um, it's super easy. It also comes with a traceable for the barn, so you don't have to worry about having any drawing skills at all. Um, and the pine trees are so freaking fun to paint using a fan brush. Um, so the pine trees, super easy, really fun. Um, this is actually like one of the most fun paintings I've done. So definitely check it out. It's up on our website. It comes with everything you need, including a traceable, all of the right colors. Um, and also we have fan brushes available on our website. So, and this one looks a bit intimidating, but I'm telling you guys, it's much easier than the painting that we've just done. So this one is called Snowden. Check it out on our website. It makes a really awesome gift for the holidays. And you could also get it as a three month gift subscription. So this will be the first painting that comes with the first month's box. And then you get two more boxes after that as part of a gift subscription, which makes an amazing gift for someone you love. All right. So now we're getting to the fun part. So this is the grass. So I'm going to use my large brush for this. Oh, and I did not mention that we actually have an event for this painting posted up on Facebook already. So this is going to come with a live tutorial on December 7th, I think, which is the first Tuesday of December. So definitely check it out. It's up on our Facebook page, um, RSVP to that event. Um, so you'll get notified when we have updates. Awesome. So let's do this. You guys ready? So I'm going to take some raw sienna and I'm going to start from the bottom of my canvas using my large brush, using the edge of it. So I'm using just this edge here. So not the flat part, but the edge. And I'm going to create these diagonal strokes. So it's going to look pretty messy at first. So I'm just going in here. I'm going right over my truck. I'm being very fearless. So going right over the shadow, right over the truck and just creating these diagonal strokes. So this is going to create an illusion of tall grass and it's going to give this painting a lot of depth. So I'm starting from the bottom and going up using the edge of my brush. Oh, this is very weird shape. So some of the grass is going to be a little bit shorter. Some of it is going to be a little bit longer. Um, and also some of it could go in different directions. So not all of it needs to be exactly in the same direction. There's some lines that could go the opposite way just to give it a more realistic look. Candy, I love that idea, putting a scarecrow in the driver's seat. Genius. Perfect for Halloween. Let's or not even for Halloween, for anyone just living on a farm. So again, guys, I'm going right over my truck. I'm not being scared to cover it up. So some of my wheel is pretty much covered. So 
So I'm also gonna just switch over to my small brush real quick. And this way I have a little bit more control over my lines. I could make them a little bit thinner. So again, I'm just starting from the bottom of my canvas and just going all the way up. And I'm applying really light pressure to my brush so that way the lines get really thin, especially towards the top. And sometimes if this is kind of a trick, if you wet your brush a little bit, then you could get much thinner lines on your canvas. So I'm just gonna add more and more of these lines. Some of them are gonna be going a different direction. So I'm literally just going the opposite way for some of these lines. So I'm just building up this grass and kind of covering up the bottom of this truck. <laughs> okay, love the black cat idea, also genius. So by the way, guys, if you're enjoying this feed right now, please give us a thumbs up on this feed. Um, and also feel free to follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube as well. It really helps us grow our audience. Um, and then if you're having a really great time tonight, please feel free to also leave a review on our Facebook page. It also helps a lot. If you guys are not having a great time, please ignore everything that I'm saying right now um, and just carry on. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Carry on. Proceed. Proceed. Ooh, that was an accident. I just added a blue um, stroke in here that I'll just easily cover up with the raw sienna. That's it. So definitely vary up your strands, have them go in slightly different directions, but for the most part, they're gonna be going towards the right side of your canvas. So this is the part, if you don't like how your wheels came out, you could pretty much just cover it up completely if you want. Or if you don't like how the back of your truck came out. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some green strokes to the bottom of my canvas just to give this grass a little bit more variation. So I don't think I even have to wash my brush. I'm just gonna dip it into the green and just go right in here. Just dive right just in. Just dive right in. Just dive right in. So we're being totally fearless right now. You could actually, you could use your large brush for this as well just to get some of these initial strokes in. But I'm just gonna go ahead and use my small brush for now. So some of these are overlapping each other, just varying up the different lengths of this grass. You could also go over these strokes with the raw sienna just to maybe make the green a little bit more subtle if you want. But it's really making this painting come alive a bit and kind of giving it 
this variation, a little pop. A little pop. Dynamics to the, the wheat feel color. Exactly. So I'm just going to go back in with some raw sienna and maybe go over some of this green just to make it a little bit more subtle. And then the colors are kind of blending in together and it looks like a really nice um, greenish raw sienna color. I don't know, Alex, what, what say you for the name? Greenish Russiana color. Kind of like a, a str straw green. Wow, that was even, awful. Can't even that was probably the worst co color name I've come up with in my life. Sadly not. <laughs> You're supposed to be on my side here. So I'm just covering up some of this green and making it into a mixed uh, green with the raw sienna. And then you could continue making some of your grass even higher with the raw sienna. So I do want to remind you guys, if you're here for the first time, we ask our uh, participants to share what they created on social media and tag us using the hashtag creatively box. So that way we can find what you created and share it on our own page. So definitely share what you created. Um, we'd love to see it. All right, guys, so for the next step, I'm going to add a little bit of a light raw sienna color to my grass just to give it even more variation. So I'm just going to mix raw sienna with a little bit of white. And I'm just going to add a few strokes here and there of this lighter color. It's also gonna be super subtle, and I think I need to use a little bit of water just to make it a little thinner. If you don't like the color, you could always just go back in with the raw sienna and just cover it up. So maybe my light highlights came out too thick, so I'm just gonna cover up some of them. Um, yes, please share even if you didn't use acrylics. We love seeing all the variations of this painting, even if you use a Sharpie or colored pencils or watercolor. Um, big yes. So guys, the last step, you ready for this, Alex? So the last step is gonna to be to sign your name on this canvas. So typically I sign it at the bottom of the canvas. You could pick a place for it. Um, your signature is a part of the art. So definitely think about it and make it look nice. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining. Again, if you had a great time tonight, please leave us a review on our Facebook page and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube. We also have a TikTok, letting you guys know. 
So follow us on all the channels um, and please join us for our next event, which is on the first Tuesday of December, um, featuring our latest painting snowed in. Thank Yay. you guys so much for joining. Have a good night. Bye.